I'm Dr. Brad Hafford, archaeologist and economic anthropologist. In this series, I'm decoding the various stories embedded within paper money and uncovering interesting facts about countries around the world. Today, I'm looking at a five peso note issued in revolutionary Mexico in 1915. We'll begin by looking at the obverse, or front, of the note. It's the side that has the clearest indication of the issuing authority, and here we have the Tesoreria General del Estado de Oaxaca, General Treasury of the State of Oaxaca. So right away, we notice that the issuing authority is not the nation of Mexico, but a portion of it, the State of Oaxaca. Although states might issue local money, the fact that the name of the nation does not appear is a good indication that the region was at least semi-independent, or saw itself as such. The right to issue currency is typically considered a sovereign privilege. That is, it can only be exercised by the controlling authority of a region. It's all to do with the trust issue. If there are many separate issuing authorities, they compete for trust in a single region, and this can be problematic, unless all of those issuers are known to be regulated in some way by the same control authority. In this case, overarching control of Mexico had broken down in the revolution of 1910, and the ensuing coup of 1913. The country largely split into its constituent states under their controlling governors and warlords. Each currency issued at the time reached only as far as the strength of the corresponding authority, often not even extending fully to the borders of the state in question. In fact, there were many private issuers of small value paper currencies, typically known as bilimbiques. While there is no mention of the overall nation of Mexico on the note, there is a large image in yellow ink behind the darker text that is characteristically Mexican. It is the eagle with a snake in its mouth perched atop a cactus, long used as the symbol of Mexico and still found on some of its currency today. The eagle and snake are part of the Mexican coat of arms. On the current official seal, the eagle is displayed in profile, while here it is displayed mostly full front with spread wings. It was depicted this way from 1821 to 1916. The image comes from the founding myth of Mexico City, or Tenochtitlan, as the Aztecs called it. The cactus represents the place of Tenochtitlan, while the eagle came to represent all that is good, devouring the snake, which represented all that was evil. Now, some people say that this interpretation is based on initial mistranslations. Unlike on the official seal, the eagle in the background of this note perches on crossed rifles and flags that sit atop the prickly pear cactus. It's not easy to see because of the overprint, but it can be pointed out at the edges, and it clearly represents Mexico in a state of conflict. The place of Tenochtitlan is under arms. It is a time of revolution and civil war. Elaborate yellow overlay lines stretch across the note in leafy and flowery designs behind the print is particularly dense in the corners where there's also a green number five, and we can see the denomination cinco pesos spelled out within the yellow print many times. Of course, there's also a big green overprint type cinco pesos, as well as a blue overtype telling us the place of issuance, Oaxaca de Juarez, and the date of issuance. The serial number is printed also in an overprint red, and the signatures of the treasurer and the comptroller are included. Such signatures are typical of paper money, lending it a semblance of official status. Representative money like this needs to be guaranteed in some way for it to function. This note states that Oaxaca will pay the bearer, pagará al portador, in cash, on efectivo, which would simply mean more notes and coin if they were available, but coins were difficult to come by in this revolutionary period. There's also a blueprint frame of tight zigzags around the note, and the name of the printers, Tipografía Artística de Julián de Soto in Oaxaca, stands at the base. The paper is relatively thick, but lacks one of the typical forms of protection against counterfeit, a watermark. Often, paper money will be printed on special paper that contains areas that are thicker or thinner than the norm, so that an image can be seen when light shines through from behind. In this case, we see no difference. Instead, the complex background designs and the many different colors in use were meant to make it difficult to counterfeit. I've left the most noticeable image to the last. Printed in blue ink is a woman's head wearing a wreath of leaves and flowers. 
In front of her is a bow and arrow and a few other items that are more difficult to identify. The eyes are closed and give the impression of a person sleeping, but the overall image is more like the head of a fallen statue. I haven't found a direct reference to what the image means, but I would interpret it in the light of the historical conflict that was ongoing at the time this note was issued, just as I have interpreted the crossed rifles and flags under the eagle. In this case, if it is the head of a classical Roman-style statue with laurel wreath, it may be a reference to the overthrow of autocratic rule, as in the case of Roman Caesars. The bow and arrow would tend to show that the overthrow had to come by force. This interpretation does not account for the closed eyes or why the figure appears to be a woman. Perhaps instead she represents a sleeping Mexico while its constituent parts struggle against one another or perhaps it represents a local Oaxacan story that I am not familiar with. Let's now look at the reverse. In fact, this side of the note might be mistaken for the obverse, since many obverses bear an image of an important person from the region, and here we see a clear portrait of a man. But there is no emphasis on the issuing authority's name here or its symbols, and that's the primary purpose of the obverse. The purpose of the reverse is typically to emphasize the circulating value and the protections offered for the note or penalties that would be meted out to counterfeiters. This note follows that pattern. But the five peso denomination is hard to see, even though it's big and central. It's written twice using large concentric circles, but they're orange in hue and thus similar to the more elaborate leafy designs of the yellow print background. The law issuing and protecting the note is printed in darker blue and is one of the more noticeable aspects of the reverse. It was law or decree number two issued on 19 February 1915, only five days before this print. Above the declaration of issuance is a statement of the extent of validity of the note within the territory of the state of Oaxaca. In the upper right, there is an overstamp of the Oaxaca treasury to add emphasis, color, and additional difficulty in imitating the note. Like the front, the back is encapsulated in a zigzag frame, this time in green ink and of a broader pattern. The entire frame is filled with color and design, so much so that it could induce headaches, but I find the background subdued enough that it somehow works as a whole. The background at left is not so dense and is more floral in design. This allows the woodcut portrait to stand out even more. Once again, I've left this most noticeable aspect to the last. It is the portrait of a distinguished gentleman looking out to the near distance. This is Benito Juarez. Born in Oaxaca of indigenous Zapotec origin, Juarez was president of Mexico from 1858 to 1872. Though some of that time he spent in exile, overall it was a period that is generally known as the Consolidation of the Republic of Mexico. He was both a local and a national hero, and after his death, the city and state of Oaxaca added de Juarez to its name, as we see on the front of this note. Juarez was able to institute some liberal reform in Mexico, taking away much of the power of the church and making the military subject to a civilian authority. But after his death, the country quickly fell back into an autocratic regime under Porfirio Diaz. Diaz became five-time president, continually re-elected in perhaps less than truly democratic fashion. Finally, in 1910, Francisco Madero ran against the Diaz regime. Diaz had Madero arrested before the election, but Madero escaped to the U.S. and called for armed insurrection against Diaz. Revolutionaries who would become historically famous, like Emiliano Zapata in south-central Mexico and Pancho Villa in the north, took up the call, and the Mexican Revolution went into full swing. Precious metals were hoarded or disappeared out of the country. Many different issuers of paper money arose, but none of it held value well. Madero became Mexican president in 1911, but many of the revolutionaries who had fought for him became disillusioned with him thereafter. In 1913, General Victoriano Huerta overthrew and killed Madero. This further exacerbated problems as some areas still supported Madero's ideas. Internal strife led to Huerta being ousted in 1914. 
But then Mexico fell still deeper into civil war. Venustiano Carranza, first chief of the Constitutionalist Army and leader of the revolt against Huerta, authorized several chiefs to issue their own banknotes and vouchers. Thus, the number of emergency money notes increased again. Those issued in Chihuahua and Oaxaca are the most commonly encountered in collections today, but in 1916, Carranza attempted a national currency printed by the American Banknote Company. These, too, devaluated quickly, and it wasn't until 1924 that an official national bank was reestablished in Mexico. I hope you enjoyed looking at this banknote with me. I'm Dr. Brad Hafford. Join me again next time on Note Nook, part of my series, Money Talks.